All right, and at one point you were in a group with Summers and Can Can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, D one. D one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. How, how, how does that? that? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, I was I was like 13, so like I took it serious, but like I think to them, like it wasn't really that serious. How did y'all even? Where did y'all build a friendship at? Just online? Yeah, online. It was it was all online based. I didn't really meet any of them in person um, around that time, but um, yeah, yeah, all online. Yeah. Was there shows that you were excited to go to growing up, or did you have to like kind of wait until you got older? You could travel or um shows. I mean, like. Other artists, I the only show that I really been to is like the I've been I went to an X show. Really? Yeah. When you were super young, I'm guessing. Oh yeah, like like eleven. It was on that Revenge tour. I think so. Because that's probably the only time that you would have played. Yeah, he came or, to Minnesota. Um, he played at a pretty big venue in my city. And so I think that's the only time he came to my city. That was um, the tour that got canceled halfway through because of, there was so much fucked up shit happening every night. He got knocked out on that, that tour. Was crazy. <laughs> yeah, that was a wild time period. Yeah. That Damn. Was. So, because I, I was gonna ask that is like, what's your perspective on, like, you know, the the prior SoundCloud rap waves, whether it was like X and I the listened whole, to that shit, bro. Right. I did. I definitely listened to that shit when I was growing up. Um, I didn't take influence like in an aspect where it's like I want to make music like this, but like I enjoyed listening to it, and like it definitely was part of like my growing up experience, just because that was like what was popping at the time. Mm. Like fucking Lil Pump and like, you know, Smoke for X, all that shit. Like, shit was big. So, yeah, I, I definitely listened to it. Yeah. Miami Baby. <laughs> Let's yeah. talk about it. So, that was one of your first songs that kind of like. That that song definitely like, like opened the door to like a lot of all the artists I know now type shit. Like, Ron So Cold, he like, he helped introduce me to like a lot of the people I know now. That song definitely like is very, was very helpful to my career. I don't really like the song. Like, yeah, I seen you say that. Why? Yeah, just bro, like the baby voice shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it sticks with me, bro, because like that song, it came with so much negative backlash, bro. Just like the baby voice shit. Like, I kept hearing it. Like, and like, bro, when I, I would go to school and like Miami, baby, bro, people would always be singing that shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah there but, was a time period where anytime you'd hear people talk about Cardi, they were pretty much talking about the baby voice. Yeah, like that was. Well, it's like a different baby voice, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's like forcing that, but like that was like my natural f voice. So mm -hmm. like I felt like bullied by the fact that like people were like, you know what I mean? Like coming at my voice type shit. Right, and it's crazy that you connected with Ron so cold like that because he was a big person in the the sort of yeah. SoundCloud scene, and he had a yeah. bunch of videos on No Jumper in like 2016, 2017. I remember, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. That's crazy because I hadn't heard his name in a few years. Yeah, he's cool, as f but that's dope that he got involved. Yeah, how, how do you reach out to you? Um, Instagram, I think, yeah, and, like, at the time, he was, like, he was connected with, like, Summers and all them in that, mm -hmm. like, that D1 shit. Like, I think he was part of it. Um, yeah, and he, he kind of got me, like, locked in with them, I guess you could say. Like, that's when, like, the D1 doors, like, open. Like, that's when, like, I started, like, like gaining actual traction in, like, the SoundCloud community for, like, the plug and be shit, and, like, people started, like, noticing, you know, like, that this little kid is Doing all this shit with the plug shit. Mm. On your, you used to do a lot of features, but like on your last project, you yeah, know, I haven't done a lot of features. I've been focusing on myself. I feel yeah. like I overdid the features when I was a lot younger, but like it's because like I don't know, bro. Like motivation is hard for me. I feel like I lose motivation with like making music a lot of the time. I don't know exactly what it is, but like I start songs, I don't finish them. You know what I mean? Like I'll start a song and just scrap it and come back to it and <laughs> five months later, and my voice will be changed by then because I'm still. And growing so you know what I mean like I can't finish it so I was just getting all these artists every artist that wanted to make a song on the you know the shit yeah so I don't know I I definitely overdid the features but yeah I'm focusing so on that's myself. why now you just focus yeah. on just not doing music with Hell anybody yeah. yeah I'd rather be known for me you know what I mean than like feeding off of someone else's fans and shit like that like I want to build my own fan base by myself mm. so the other day we was at uh your show and yeah. that was you and Richard Mary's show that yeah. was your first performance ever now, I had done a little performance um, with the same, like, group that in that interviewed me that I was speaking about from my mm -hmm. city. And, like, there wasn't really any traction there. I mean, like, it was a, it was a smaller show. Um, and years ago. Years ago. So, like, I hadn't really gained, like, a real fan base yet. Um, but, yeah, this is the first show where it was, like, real, like, diehard and fans. Like, you came out to Gene Sog, wasn't it? Yeah. That's, all right. And the crowd was singing it word from word. Bro, I was so fucking surprised, like. 
I was so worried about that show, bro. I thought it, like it was gonna be like an awkward experience, but like right when I got on the stage, like the adrenaline just took over type shit, and like I was like a whole different fucking person. The crowd knew like damn near every song, every fucking word, every, every song, word. Bro. That's, so it was, I'm for this to be your first show in LA. Like how yeah. how did you feel after you did that show? Like you was like I'm really oh adrenaline high, bro. Like I felt good as fuck. Like I. I knew that, like, I had a fan base, but, like, I didn't know that they were, like, you know, like, locked in like that, bro. Like, they, yeah, they blew my mind for sure. He sent me that clip, and yeah. that just, seeing that level of passion from that many people just made me, like, oh, fuck, I gotta actually, like, You don't really see that a lot it. anymore no. in the underground. Like, yeah. that's fucking rare, bro. Like, yeah, it was a lit moment. Okay. We always talk about how the underground's kind of dead because artists get signed and kind of blow up too yeah, quickly. Yeah, they go so in a whole different direction. There's not, like, enough time where they're underground and they're able to really, like, build that fan base up and shit, but it feels like that. I felt like, oh, I'm witnessing something special when I observed this. Yeah, bro, I don't want to be one of those artists. Real shit. I want to stay, like, with this underground sound. I want to turn that into something else. Really? Real so if a label came to you and offered you a million dollars right now, you'd probably be confident in turning it down because you want to? build more organically it depends like what would like come from that like because like bro like if it involves like like staying with my sound type shit and like turning plug and b into like something bigger like i'm all for it you know mm -hmm. what i mean like that shit's cool but like i wouldn't want to branch out into like a mainstream side of like you know what i mean like that's just not for me like i always want to make this like this underground sound because i mean that's kind of the question is like would you rather be someone who's less rich but super true to the culture and what you believe in or do you want to be somebody who maybe gets a lot of money but you have to basically compromise who you are along the way yeah i feel you yeah bro i don't know i i just want to make plug and be honestly bro that's all i'm interested in doing you know what's funny i just realized is that the one interview that you did was with water wave tv who i know because that's what that's what i'm talking about i know because i went to a kendama event in your city oh, at one wow. point bro i think i saw that and he slid on me while i was outside the <laughs> event because he was hitting me up trying to do an interview and i was just kind of ignoring it or yeah. whatever and he pulled up and fucking took me into an yeah. alley and interviewed me so that's, that's fucking hilarious i, I saw world. that i remember seeing that yeah yeah, it was Waterway. Yeah, that's who I did the show with and the interview. Yeah. You got to respect someone trying to do content in a small city like that bro, that doesn't have it. as much going on, you know? Yeah, no, it's definitely nothing against them. I'm just being, like, 100% honest. Mm -hmm. Like, that wasn't, like, a good interview in my eyes just for me and, like, the size of artist I was. You know what I mean? Like, the questions. Like, mm -hmm. they just weren't correct for me. You ever play Kendama? I have. Because you grew up around there. Sweets. I have played, yeah. Street. I never, like, got, like, into it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I be seeing, like, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that's just cool. And he's from, it. like, the most prevalent Kendama city, which is not is it, something. Are we that, really known for that? Well, that's where the biggest company is from. Minnesota? Sweets. Oh, I know what that is. Yeah, that's, that's them. Yeah, like, I think they, like, pulled up to our school one time. Like, oh, yeah. They do all they kinds, kinds of doing demos all that shit, and shit, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Crazy. That's cool. Small world. Oh, did, did Maddox have any influence over you? Mm, not really. Not really. I, mean, I fuck with bro. But like, Do you get compared to him a lot? Because, you know, like, he was early on with it. The well, only people that be, like, comparing us is, like, like the corny-ass, like, fans, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, got... we're in our own different, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a whole different lane type shit, like, whole different sound. So, yeah. But people do be doing that, but, like, it, it'd be, like, his fans that, like, will, like, come across me on the internet type shit, you know what I mean? And try yeah. to compare us, but, yeah. Why the name Lil Sean anyway? Hmm? Why the, how did you get your name Lil My Sean? name? Yeah. Honestly, bro, you know, my, my mom came up with that shit. Yeah. That's not something I've ever heard someone say. My mom came up with my rap name. I like that. Yeah, yeah. So, like, bro, like, I was struggling so hard to, like, think of what the fuck I'm going to name myself. And, like, I don't know. She just popped into her head. She's like, Lil Sean. It was as simple as that, bro. Like, there's no meaning behind it at all. Where I was just chilling with my mom. And I was like, I need a, I need a rap name. She was like, Lil Sean. I was like, oh. And she spazzed fuck, on fucking it hard. Too. Yeah, that's like, all. Damn, I just went with it. I was like, shit. Fucking hard, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, damn. 